Hi, my name is Austin. I'm a physical therapist. And today I have with me Kristen, who's a cardiovascular ICU nurse. And today we're going to be talking about ECMO, extracorporeal membrane oxygenation and her experience with it. So before we get to talking about your experience, can you explain what ECMO is? So ECMO stands for extracorporeal membrane oxygenation. If we take the first part of ECMO, which is extracorporeal, it means it's happening outside the body. So it's a type of life support that we use for critically ill patients, specifically those who go into acute respiratory failure or have issues with the heart, allows the heart and lungs to rest. And so we have this machine that helps pump blood continuously, takes the blood out of the patient, goes through this machine to allow some gas exchange, take out excess CO2, increase oxygenation, return back to the patient. So it's essentially allowing the lungs and heart to rest until the heart and lungs get a little bit stronger and we can start coming off of the, the machine. So ECMO is pretty intense. What is your role with working with patients on ECMO? So I'll go into it in terms of the state of Nevada, at least. Um, Nurses actually work with somebody called an ECMO perfusionist or specialist, but in other places, nurses manage the ECMO machine or circuit is what we call it itself. So for me, I still take on the role as what I would do for any ICU patient. I would do my head to toe assessment, admissure medications, provide hygiene care. But now I work with somebody who manages the machine itself and we work together collaboratively to decide, you know, what's best for this patient in terms of how we can start coming off on ECMO. That's our main goal. So for me, what's added on with my assessments is also looking at the cannula sites. So it's these tubes that are very large that go into a vein in their neck or their groin um, or even both sides of their neck and see if there's any issues of bleeding, make sure it's in the correct spot because it would be a bad you know, it'd be very bad if it's in the wrong place and, you know, work with the um, work with the ECMO perfusionist specialist in terms of the blood clotting, see if it's doing fine with the machine, because we also don't want any clots to be in the machine itself and to the patient. So I feel like a lot of people don't know what ECMO is or what a patient looks like when they're on ECMO. So can you describe what a patient looks like? You know, are they on bed rest? Are they awake? Are they confused? Are they able to answer your questions? You know, when you walk into the patient room, what do they look like? So for myself, if I come on shift and I'm assigned to an ECMO patient, for the most part, these patients are on bed rest. Um, again, you'll see a patient that has two cannulas, so we call it a drain and a return cannula. So one that drains blood from either their neck or their uh, femoral artery or vein, where it goes into the machine or the circuit that allows for that gas exchange to get rid of the CO2, increase oxygenation. And then one that goes back to the patient, again, either through the vein or the um, in their neck or in their groin. So for the most part, we do have our patients on bed rest. However, you can actually walk an ECMO patient, which is awesome. Um, it does take, you know, it takes a team to, to get a patient up. But as long as a patient is, you know, a little bit more awake, we don't want them too drowsy and try to get them up because we want them to try for themselves. Early immobilization is so important for these ECMO patients to get them off of the machine itself. So we'll either dangle them, have them sit at the edge of the bed, or go ahead and walk them, which I've had the experience to do so. And it's awesome because, you know, you can see these patients on ECMO be motivated to get off this machine and get better. All right. So you mentioned somebody on ECMO can actually walk, which is insane because as a physical therapist, our main goal is to get them up and going to go home. And a lot of times patients on ECMO, you know, their family members are concerned for them and they want to see them walk and get better. When you see somebody who is ready to start walking, can you first describe, you know, who is around the patient when they're about to walk? And then what is your specific role? Like, are, are you doing anything while the physical therapist is helping? And, you know, what, how important is your role to be there? Yeah. So it takes a, a whole team, like I said, to get an ECMO patient up. So we, we will usually have myself as a primary nurse, a uh, secondary nurse, anyone who is able to help at the time. Uh, we have our physical therapist. We have the respiratory therapist who manages the ventilator, um, either if the patient has a tracheostomy or is intubated. And then we have our ECMO perfusionist specialist who's in charge of the machine itself. 
And then even the provider sometimes, they'll come by, you know, help out and see what's best for the patient. So for my job specifically, I'll make sure I have all my lines all ready to go because if anything is, you know, tangled or out of place, it could cause some issues when ambulating. As for the physical therapist, they will, you know, see what's best for the patient if they need like a walker. Um, for the most part, they do a gait belt such as that. And um, making sure the respiratory therapist is ready to go when um, we get them up because we want to make sure we have enough uh, slack on the ventilator. And then ECMO perfusionist specialist will uh, actually take the circuit itself and make it a little bit more portable just so we can be able to walk the patient. So we'll time it at the same time, make sure everybody's ready. And so we can all move as, you know, as one and then have the patient walk a little bit, you know, first to the door. And then if they make it that far, maybe push them a little bit further, walked in the unit and then, you know, have a chair ready as well. So in the case a patient gets tired, then we can have them sit in the chair, rest a little bit, make sure all of our, our wires, um, the, you know, any like the tubing for the IVs are all set. And the cannulas itself is so important when make sure it's, you know, we're securing it very well. Um, and then if they're all is good, then we'll have them go sit in the chair for a couple of hours and then get them back to bed. So last question, can you go over on ECMO, how many patients really make it out of the ICU? Because, you know, I assume that it's so intense and heavy on your body mm -hmm. and there's a lot of rehab and there's a lot of things going on, you know, a lot of lines, mm -hmm. medical instability. How many people actually make it out? So there are two types of ECMO. There's a VV, VA ECMO. So venous to venous is a type where it's the cannula sites are vein to vein, and it's mainly for patients who go into respiratory failure. Those survive about, or survival rates about 50 to 70%. While VA ECMO is a little more intense, I would say venous to arterial. Um, those are patients that have mainly cardiac issues. So go into cardiac arrest, need some support after that event has happened, that's usually less than 50%. Um, commonly, I do see VV ECMO more, but when it comes to VA ECMO, you know, I don't see, I don't see a lot of them, but with the survival rate, I do see where it goes with the less than 50%. Well, Kristen, thank you for coming on to the PT lounge and just talking about ECMO. Um, to close out, can you just give a little bit of advice for somebody, maybe a nurse, you know, who is about to see their first ECMO patient? Mm -hmm. Of course. So I would definitely research more about ECMO. I did not know about ECMO until I started working in the CVICU. So I got to have a little bit more knowledge and background on what kind of patient an ECMO patient is. And, you know, don't be afraid. Ask questions. I always ask questions to the ECMO perfusionist specialist, the one who's managing the ECMO circuit itself about what's going on, you know, what my numbers mean in terms of what we can do for this patient and what is our goal to get this patient off? Does that mean that we need to increase the oxygenation on the ECMO, on the ventilator? Do we need to change up the medications? So collaborate with your team, collaborate with the provider, collaborate with the one managing the ECMO. And of course, work with your, your physical therapist physical therapist, because you want them to be a little bit more um, mobilized and get them off the machine. Well, thank you for tuning into the PT Lounge. If you found that video interesting or beneficial, go ahead and leave a like and subscribe to this channel and we'll see you on the next one.